Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today for this comprehensive and illuminating webinar. Andy Og, who I'm proud to say is also my amazing son, is going to take us on a journey today for an in-depth and cumulative look into digital marketing techniques to build your business. Andy resides in Surprise, Arizona with his beautiful wife and two adorable daughters, Peyton and Lila. He has over 10 years of marketing experience in several industries, with the last five as co-owner with Tom and I of TravelProfessionalNews.com, FindAHostTravelAgency.com, and HomeBasedTravelAgent.com. He is also co-author of eight travel industry-focused books. Andy enjoys sharing the power of digital marketing and the success that it can provide when implemented. He holds a bachelor degree in marketing from Cal State San Bernardino and a CTIE from the Travel Institute. So please join me in welcoming Andy today. Well, thank you very much, Miss Joni Og. I appreciate the very warm welcome. And I appreciate all of you guys joining us today and uh, excited to kind of share some of these very uh, revolutionary thoughts, uh, which shouldn't be too revolutionary, but should be best practice for us all as we look forward from a very turbulent year um, into getting back to travel and getting our, our beloved industry moving once again. Um, I, my name is Andy Og, and I'm very excited to join with all of you today and have this fun discussion. Um, on the screen right now, I've got my LinkedIn profile. If you're interested in connecting, please uh, jot it down and add me whenever you have a second. I'm always looking forward to connecting people on that network uh, you know, related to the industry and everything we can do in it. Oh, and Andy, so let's get before, you, before you start, yeah. Andy, I forgot. I just want to mention one thing um, to everybody. We are going to be doing questions at the end of this. Um, I know Andy may have mentioned that, maybe mentioning that, but we are going to do questions. We're also going to be giving away a prize. So be sure to listen carefully. And um, once Andy's all done with his presentation, we'll go, you know, open it up to some um, questions that you guys might have. And all you need to do to put the questions in is just put them over in the question the questions pane that you see there on your side of your screen and then we'll get to those um, as soon as we can and get to as many of them as we possibly can and then we'll do the prize so go ahead Andy take it away perfect thank you and yes the prize we're giving away today is a copy of our new book uh, which is actually the blueprint for this presentation uh, the new book is called digital marketing in the travel industry and I'll touch on that in a little bit so today we're going to be diving into really three topics, uh, digital marketing overview, uh, why market digitally, and then five tips to an effective digital marketing campaign or platform. Uh, we should have some time for Q&A, and I always look forward to, to hearing your thoughts or questions, so please jot, jot those down or type them in before you forget them. So digital marketing, um, gosh, it, it's, a, it's a big thing, and it's not just one avenue anymore. It's a culmination of avenues. Um, it's it, back in the day, it was just having a website. Uh, five years ago, it was just having a social media presence. But today, to be successful in digital marketing, you need to have a lot of things in place. Not only to have a significant reach, but to make sure that all of those things touch one another and bring one end goal in motion. Uh, there are a lot of ways to do this, and we're going to talk about a few of those right now. So what is digital marketing? It's a productive and very measurable way of doing things. It's, it's productive now, but really is aimed at the future. And, and after this past year, living through a pandemic, I think we all know that digital and non-touch services are increasingly on the rise. So as a travel professional, there's a multitude of digital marketing avenues, but there's digital printing, um, there's websites, there's email marketing, there's content publishing, there's social media, there's banner advertising, there's online communities, there are groups, there's video marketing, affiliate marketing, there's travel influencer marketing, paid advertising placements, and of course, digital ebook and e magazine publishing. Now, all of these things are viable. Each and every one of these can be enough to focus on for a whole year. But the goal of this presentation is to not show you one, but to show you how we can make multiple, multiple of these things work for you and your business. Digital marketing, it should use a, a multitude of avenues 
to drive engagement, interest, and users to one specific action. Bookings. Yeah, that's the name of the game. You guys want bookings, and not only just bookings, but you want to see them actually go on their trips, which looking at the news before this presentation, I think we're getting really close. Um, you know, the vaccinations are up. There's countries relieving their uh, quarantine times. I think we're on the verge of seeing travel come back. And I hallelujah for all of that. And for all of you being here, bettering yourselves, bettering your business, and getting ready for the travel boom that is about to happen. Uh, it should also bring fresh and relevant leads into your business based on your expertise, your niche, and your focused marketing. And it should be an ongoing effort and evolution to find the best methods for your business and that produce the highest results because each one of your businesses are very different. You know, whether you specialize in river cruising or you specialize in all-inclusive, you specialize in spring break travel, uh, your, your marketing, it, it isn't a one-shoe-fits-all here. It, it's a very targeted and uh, specific thing you must figure out for your niece, your specialty, and, and obviously for your clientele. So why would we market digitally? You know, I, I'm sure all of you guys still see them today. If you drove your car down the highway, you might see some billboards on the road. Now, those are really unmeasurable way of marketing because how many cars drive by it, how many people see it, how many people remember to engage with the messaging? Well, digital marketing provides you extremely measurable analytical results that you can track. So while it might be an investment of money, maybe, or time, it's very measurable and you're able to refine and find the best practice that works best. So it's effective and measurable. And, and these are some crazy statistics. Now these are taken over the past year. So these numbers have jumped significantly since pre-pandemic. But people spend about three and a half hours a day online. Now that's not work-related, that's recreational. 51% of people purchase online regularly. And I'll raise my hand, I'm definitely one of those people. Um, we have Amazon, I think, at our house almost every few days, dropping off, whether it be vitamins, whether it's something for the house, whether whatever it is, uh, you know, instead of getting in the car, towing along our two kids, you know, it's two, three clicks and we, we've got what we need for a fair price. 49% of people want to receive promotional email. Now, that's nearly half of your clients want to receive promotions and information from you. So are you sending that to them? Are you giving them what they want? 63% of people want to stay in touch and contact with a business of interest. Now, these can be big brands like Nike or Reebok, or it could be a smaller family-owned business that does landscaping. Whatever it is, 63% of those people want to at least stay in touch with them, probably so they don't forget them, and two, so they can learn more about what they can do in the future. 72% of purchasing decisions are researched online. I believe that entirely. If you're at the store and you think you might be able to find a better price online, how many of you have cracked open your phone and looked at Amazon or looked at Google to see if there's a better price available? It's just human, it's, it's human tendency now. And this was a big one I just came across a couple of weeks ago. Video will account for 80% of internet traffic in 2021. That's astounding to me. YouTube has grown by leaps and bounds and that's a great place to be if you're looking to gain new clientele. So it's measurement, and, and this is a big part of it too, is it gives you information. Digital marketing will provide you measurable returns, and it will give you insights that allow for fine tuning of your messaging, of your branding, of all of those pieces. It will give you brand reputation, a memorable logo. It'll give you a name in the digital realm that people will see and recognize. What worked and how it worked. If it didn't work the first time, if you do a couple small tweaks to your demographic reach, it may work the second time. And it also gives you the ability to become an expert in your niche. So COVID really made digital a must. This past year, um, we've gone from no masks and joining our families as big groups to uh, air high fives and virtual hugs and distance learning and distance Thanksgivings and all of these very, who would have thought, situations. Um, and it also changed our landscape. Um, before COVID, uh, digital trends were already increasing. Before COVID, big 
stores like Macy's and Nordstrom's and all these big franchises that have been around forever were already closing down because retail markets were dictating that they weren't sustainable. Digital shopping was already on the crease, uh, increasing. Amazon didn't just pop up overnight. They were already getting more market share. And the digital footprints were increasing. And that, that means you. You know, maybe, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, you just had a Facebook, but now you've got a Facebook and a Tumblr and a Pinterest and an Instagram and a Twitter and all these other platforms. And that's your digital footprint. How much of the digital world are you on? And when COVID hit, I mean, trends exploded. Um, services like Instacart went from nothing to monumental and helpful. Um, it, it, it just pushed fast forward on so many different things. The everlasting, really, the effects of COVID, it's going to be a hard paradigm shift in our human culture, in our behavior, in our interactions. It has already changed. Now, as we look forward, we might see some cool things come back, like going to restaurants whenever we want, not having to wear a mask or socially distance. But there are some things that have happened in this past year that, that, won't, that won't go away. They, they have become the new normal. They have become the new way of life. And it's good to accept that. Our book, I got to put a pitch in here. I do apologize. Uh, our book is really uh, a great read. This is built over 10 years of marketing experience, and we've been doing this for a long time. Uh, this book is focused entirely on introducing ideas, education, and provides really in-depth best practices on how to initiate an SEO strategy, how to utilize Seamless and Seam in your campaigns of your analytics, how to actually use photos on your website and then actually have them found by Google so you appear in more places than just one. It assists with strategies and implementations. It provides a lot of examples and it really, really gives you a great platform to get started. So there's my, there's my pitch. I have to do it. I'm sorry. So top five tips uh, for successful digital marketing. Now this is taken straight from the book. All of this is in the book. I'm going to touch briefly and if you are in looking for more in-depth the book is a great, a great asset to have. So one, your travel agency website, your ultimate, your ultimate business card. I mean, digitally, that is the best thing to do. It's not Facebook. It's not MySpace. It's not a link tree. It's your website. This should house everything about you. There's a lot of different types of websites. There's a landing page website, which is a very clear call to action. It could be like a um, lead generation tool for you. Are you interested in going on a trip in the next year? Well, yeah, I am. Here, give me your email address and I'll get in touch with you. That'd be an example of a landing page website. A community website, building a community or group based around your common interest, whether it be gardening, whether it be um, construction, whatever it might be, a community website could help generate leads from common interests. A travel blog or vlog, I still don't like that word, but it's a video blog website where you talk about yourself, you talk about your experiences, you talk about your life, you talk about the things you know. Um, and then travel niche websites. Again, it uh, could be utilizing a blog type format where you talk about the absolute best places to go in Mexico or the Caribbean or Hawaii, uh, it, it, demonstrating your expertise in your niche. Everything you do digitally should point to one thing, and that's your website. The second thing we could kind of touch on on your website, it should have, and this is kind of a blueprint for an effective website, but it should have video. It should contain photos. And when you get your photos, please do not go to Google and just pick them up. You are a business. You need to have licensed images. It's very important. You don't want to get a letter in the mail saying, hey, we're suing you for X number of dollars because you used our photo. Uh, we uh, use Adobe uh, stock images. It's got a monthly fee or you can pay per image. Every single photo in this presentation is licensed by them. And to be true, truthful, it is honestly very easy and the photos are phenomenal. Um, I highly, highly recommend them. I do not work for Adobe. This is just a pro professional recommendation. Um, they should provide consumer downloads. 10 ways to save for a vacation in 2021. Five things never to forget when traveling to Europe. 10 things to pack for your first river cruise. I mean, the ideas are endless depending on your niche, depending on your clientele and your specialty. It should have reviews. Uh, and that's something that during this past year would have been, should still be very easy to ask for. I'm sure all of you attending this webinar had several clients that had to postpone or cancel their trips 
because of the pandemic. And I'm sure you probably did right by them because that's what the travel industry did. It'd be a great time to reach out and say, you know, I'm really excited to get my business back and moving. Would you mind sharing a, a review of how I handled your cancellation on X, X, and Y? And I'm sure they would do it willingly and it would be helpful for your website, not only in uh, functionality, but also when consumers are choosing to make a decision. It should provide and offer unique content, stuff that you write, not stuff that you grab, not stuff that you put together from multiple sources, but stuff that you've experienced and you can personally share. Some other features you can include, maps. You know, these could also be downloads where they have to put an email address in to download. Uh, it could create a hotspot list. You know, top tips. You know, if you're going to Greece, where's the best place to have lunch with a view? All of these really thing, important things that sometimes consumers research, research on their own, but a travel professional can show them the way the first time in the right way. Um, it can and should. Uh, I firmly believe your personal experiences and focus articles on your expertise. Again, depending on your niche, it should be really catered to what you focus on and generating a lot of factors. And I'll touch on this in a second, but keyword repetition and dominance in your area, area of expertise. <clears throat> Excuse me. Number two, this is the, the nerdy part of, uh, of the website, uh, the back end. To become a viable digital marketing resource, your travel agency website should, and, and, and in all honesty, must load quickly and provide content of use. Now, uh, we run a website, travelprofessionalnews.com. I built that site about six years ago, and it wasn't doing great uh, on the search engines. On the organic reach, it was a little low, so I did some reading about page loading. And I had no idea how important that was. But a few years ago, I ran a few tests and I optimized our images and I made everything kind of load quicker so it loads as you view the website. And wham, we increased our organic reach by 20% in almost a month. So it should load quickly. If your images aren't optimized, do it. If they aren't using alt tags and key tags and all these things that I'm gonna to touch on here, you need to do it because it will help you reach more people. It should be 100% mobile friendly. And, and not just mobile friendly, but easy to navigate on a mobile device. I, I don't have the statistic in front of me, but I believe that it was about 59% of all web viewing is happening on a mobile device. Now I'm an exception. I like my computer. I don't see real well, so I like to have a big screen in front of me, but my wife uses her phone for just about everything, online shopping, dinner reservation, you name it, she does it on her phone. And that's a lot of people. There's no doubt that personal computer sales have dropped dramatically because of the smartphone and its capabilities. Your website, the back end of your website, it should contain strong keyword placements, repetition and optimization. So for example, let's talk about river cruising. You wanna have that word river cruising, river cruising travel, river cruising travel agent, river cruising experiences, river cruising specialists everywhere on the back of your website. When you, host, when you host your images, there's areas where you can put your alt tags, descriptions, captions. Those all should be really repetition of what your niche and your specialty is. Your, keywords, your keyword focused domain. Now this is important. If you're a river cruising specialist and that's really where your bread and butter is, you probably don't wanna have something like Caribbean Vacations by Jam as your domain name, because it doesn't say anything about river cruising, does it? You want to have river cruising specialist or travel agent or travel professional in your domain name, because that only verifies your specialist, your specialty as that for everyone. Your meta tags and headline H1, H2, H3 content to focus search engines on the key content you're posting and keywords. Again, repetition is very important. If you have a blog post about my first trip to Mexico, we'll go one step further and say my first trip to Guadalajara, Mexico in 2020. And then your first headline, Guadalajara, Mexico. Here's top tips to travel to. And you'll be able to really reiterate those words throughout the article if you stay focused enough. And that just does a wealth of success in the search engine world. And it should also, the very last part here, have a high level of user satisfaction. Now, this isn't something that you get to say, but what happens is the more time people go to your website, 
and they stay on your website and they click around in your website, whether it's another article, whether it's a resource, whether it's a download, whatever it is, that provides a user satisfaction rating to the, all the search engines. The higher that rating, the more organic traffic you will get and not have to pay a dime for. Uh, the last part, internal and external backlinks and linking, very important. If you have an article that's anywhere near the realm of a current article you're working on or an experience you're working on, link to it because they might be interested in learning more information. On top of that, if you have an affiliate code set up with any of your uh, vendors, any of your suppliers, you can link to their website, drive traffic to them, and again, the links going in and out of a website are very important. So SEO, what does SEO stand for? It stands just for search engine optimization. It is not just one thing, it is so many things. Uh, it's your website, it's ranking, it's, it's content, it's the architect of your website, it's traffic, it's all of these things. And it is overwhelming. <clears throat> it's covered really in depth in our book. Uh, we go, uh, we have a, a full chapter, I think it's about 30 pages on it. Um, it really is something that it takes a lot of time. And it's not something that's instantly rewarded, like publishing your website. Um, you know, when you first publish it, you're like, yes, I can use it and see it until you go use it and you find all the problems with it. But SEO is a really long-term thing. Um, it, it's an ongoing implementation and effort to ensure your website and all of your content that you've worked on is put to use and is an effective way, you know, as effective as possible. No, none, SEO can be done in a day or a week. It takes time. And with that time, it, it creates consistency and it creates the results of organic reach. Um, six, seven years ago, I, I ran a business and we were approached by an SB, SEO expert. And you know, it was like $250 to do an SEO package. So me and my partner, we did it. And uh, we had an online uh, retail store and the, the, the store went crazy. I mean, it went crazy for about a month and we had sales at the wazoo. We thought we were on track to make this thing actually start making us some money. And a few weeks after we did it, it went down. And by down, I mean it completely stopped. No more sales, no more traffic. And what he had done was an SEO, what they call bad practice. Um, and it damaged our domain reputation. It damaged our store cred credibility. And ultimately, we shut the business down as a result of that decision. So make sure that you don't fall gimmick to those SEO experts that are offering their services for $300. Um, SEO cannot be done that quickly. It takes time. So don't fall for the scam like I did. <laughs> Learn from my mistakes. And, and you think of SEO as a, as a long-term investment, not only in yourself, but in your business. So social, the social media world, it's, it's really big and everybody is on it. I mean, um, and, and it's something that I think we have to have a part in. Now, I don't think it should be everything, but I do think it's important that every business, including yours, has a role in social media. But what's the purpose of it? Um, so you, you should use social media to, to connect with people in the travel industry. Connect with me, go on our LinkedIn, go on my LinkedIn and add me. Connect with your suppliers, your BDMs. If you're with a host agency, uh, connect with your trainers, connect with your, you know, your leads, connect with all the people that you have connections with. It should engage with influencers. This is a best practice because influencers through this past year have grown by leaps and bounds. They're getting paid more and more money than they ever have to influence people that are sitting at home because we've all been through a lockdown at some point in this in past year to buy a product. Engage with them. A lot of people see their content, and if your name's in the comment section, it might drum up something for you. Ask for online recommendations. Now, back in August, uh, we moved from San Diego to Arizona, and we moved out here. We had no idea where anything was, where our kid could go to school, what we were even really doing. So we asked online, and we asked a lot. And to be honest, we made some really great connections and friends by doing that. So don't be afraid to ask for recommendations. If you need a plumber, ask online. If you need a CPA, ask online. It's a great way for you to create some new authentic connections. Join Facebook groups of interest. Again, focus on your own life, whether it's gardening, whether it's your car, whatever it might be. 
join groups and start creating those connections. You should be updated with latest trends. And this is something that's really hard to do nowadays because the news is all over the place, but uh, at least being up to date, and you're able to at least provide your thoughts or your respectful opinion. You wanna talk about your personal experience. And again, I lean toward, uh, you just wrote a really great blog about the best resort in, for spring break in Florida. Um, and you posted it to your website. You could share that link, which drives people to your website. Um, and talk a little bit in the posting about what it was like for you and, and why you chose this place. Uh, you want to post great visuals. You don't want to be that person that posts pictures that are all blurry and hard to see. Um, you want to post things that are attractive to people because social media is very, very visual. Uh, Instagram is almost all visual. Uh, it's video and photos only um, with a very small area for text. So uh, focus on those visuals and take great photos. If you didn't turn out quite the first one, you don't have to develop the film anymore. Take a few more and get a good one. Share posts from other sources, from credible sources. If uh, Royal Caribbean shares an update today about them having their sailing start next month, which I hope, um, you know, share that with your clients. Let them know you're on top of it. You're watching the industry. You're going to know before them. And don't be afraid to try new things. Social media isn't the end all of life. Um, don't be afraid to try new things on there. Ask questions, submit a poll, do something new. And you want to build up your own unique presence. Um, and, and this is again, you know, s s putting yourself out there as a travel professional. If you have a new PTA, uh, parent teacher association that your, your, your child or your grandchild just joined and you have the opportunity of joining it, uh, share with them. Hey, you know, I'm a travel professional. I'm not here to recruit business, but if you're interested, I'm here to help. And going so so on Facebook. Um, so we're just gonna talk just solely on Facebook right now. Five ways to maximize, maximize your efforts on Facebook. Focus your marketing efforts on your specialty, niche, and target audience. If you're using Facebook ads, you wanna really create an ad criteria that focuses on your specialty of your marketing. So again, if you're looking at river cruising, you wanna look at an older, typically, an older demographic. And you're going to maybe even want to go one step further and, and dial it into a specific area. If you're specializing in Mexico, uh, you know, booze cruise travel, probably want to not go with that demographic. You're going to probably want to dial it into a younger age. And maybe they live in a college campus town. So you can even dial it in there. But really, really spend the time and dial in those ads. Uh, we have a great friend named Jeff Millar. And, and he shared a story with me a couple of years ago. He spent about a day. Uh, off and on building an ad segment for Hawaii travel. And the results he saw on Facebook blew him away. I mean, he saw more sales from that one campaign. I don't remember how much it cost him, but it wasn't anything astronomical. That it, it just was astounding to him. So it is effective if you dial it in right. Um, utilize groups. You know, again, bring up that group word of interest. You know, create authentic connections through a commonality. You know, I, I like to plant trees. I like to, I like to take care of uh, trees and gardening and stuff like that. It's fun to do. So joining a group about that might be really good to do. If you like to hike, there could be groups all about that. You know, talking about a hike or sharing a fun experience, whatever it might be. You want to engage with prospective clients, brands, and partners. Like, comment, share, and repeat. I mean, this is common practice, but I'll tell you that a comment goes a lot further than a, a like because your name pops up. And people can see that you wrote something, whereas a like you get put into, uh, you know, A, B, C, and 184 other people like this. Chances are you're probably one of the other 184. No one ever really looks to see who those people were. So if you really are trying to grow your social media presence on Facebook, comment. It does help. You want to think local as well. Think about other local businesses, entrepreneurs, and things that you can connect with, whether it's in construction, plumbing, whether it's uh, landscaping, whether it's, uh, you know, a small business, you know, a favorite restaurant you have. Maybe it's a, you know, a, a favorite workout or gym place you like to go to. You know, these are all local entrepreneurs that share the common interest of running a business. If you share with them what you do and how you can be able to maybe help them down the road or even sharing their profile on your Facebook, that might be something to help grow connections of organic reach without paying for it and become a content creator. 
and of course, share your own content. And these are the options of driving people to your website. If you're able to post and, and share unique experiences and content, it will produce astronomical results. Content is king. Email marketing, number four here, and I can't touch on this enough. I think that email marketing is the next big thing. And it was already a big thing. And it's always been a big thing. But things have changed again. It's a direct connection to your context. There's no algorithms. There's no one telling you that your post can only reach 10 people. If you have a list of 50 people, your email gets sent to 50 people. If you have a list of 5,000 people, your email is sent to 5,000 people. There's no one in the middle telling you what you can and cannot do, and no one in the middle asking you for more money for it to reach people. So while social media is always important, you also want to make sure that you're using the tools you have available to be productive. So always use your name at youragency.com. So uh, my name is Rhonda with uh, rivercruisingbyrhonda.com. That should be your email address. Do not use Gmail. Do not use AOL. Do not use Hotmail. I know they're free. They make every kind of difference in your professionalism and your consistency as a brand. Always create mailings of use. Don't send an email because you have to send an email or because it's been two weeks since you sent your last email. Send emails that create things of use, whether it's a download, whether it's a call to action for an upcoming sailing or a great deal, make sure it's something that they're gonna wanna open. Always share you and your expertise. Whether it's a little intro paragraph talking about how you're excited for your upcoming trip or that you heard that this is happening, be personable. Always ensure it's 100% mobile compatible. Now, I do know this statistic, and I believe it's 64% of emails are open for the first time on a mobile device. Now, again, I use my computer for everything, but I open emails on my phone all the time. I never really reply to them on my phone, but I open them. So Always make sure that your email, when it comes through, it looks great on any device. And you can test that with whatever email marketing program you're utilizing, whether it's Content Contact or Active Campaign or whatever ones you're, your MailChimp. You can send yourself a test, look at it on your computer, look at it on your phone, and make sure that the call to actions look good, it's easy to read, and that people have an enticing reason to open it. Always review engagements and the tracking to better craft your efforts. Now, if you do this for long enough, you're gonna see a trend. Maybe people scroll all the way down to the bottom before they click. Maybe no one scrolls to the bottom and they click on the first thing they see. Maybe they're not opening at all. Uh, but you wanna make sure you look at this and critique your messaging to make sure that you can make it more effective for you because nobody wants to work for free. Um, never oversend. Don't send more than one email a week. Um, on average, I think that's about an industry recommendation. Um, you don't want to, you know, the, the holidays were over three months ago, and I'm still unsubscribing from email lists that my wife signed up for when we were doing our online shopping for the girls. Um, so don't oversend. Uh, be respectful and make sure, again, when you do send, it's something that they're going to enjoy to look at. And never stop communicating. Emails don't cost much to send and they don't take much time to create nowadays with this awesome technology we have. Always stay in front of people. Never get lazy in your content. If you don't have anything to send, don't send something. Wait till you're motivated, get a great article, create a great tool for someone, for your list that's applicable, and then send that. But don't stop and don't get lazy with it. 10 tips for success on email marketing. Um, you get one shot for a first impression. Uh, we're currently in the process of moving our email provider, and I'll tell you the process was a little bit, a little bit extreme. But you know what? I, I followed the instructions. It's taken almost three weeks, and, and the results are already starting to prove itself because our open rates have jumped uh, 20 percent already. So don't mess up that first shot. It's really easy to click unsubscribe if someone doesn't like it right away. So make sure you give a good first impression. Create trust and expertise through your content that you're sharing. Branded email addresses establish your business as credible and professional, as I talked about, your name at youragency.com. 
maximize your backlinking to your website. And again, it all comes back to content on your website. If you have 15 recent articles that you wrote on, worked on in the past month, so once, one every two days, um, you know, that's great fresh content to share. And chances are they're gonna click on one of them because it's fresh and new and useful. Target your audience through segments. This is a great thing. Um, you can create segments in your marketing. So if you have a list of people who are really in, in, in the family generational travel, you can really segment content and uh, create a segment for just them. So you send an email to that group focused on generational travel. Then you've got another group that's focused on couples travel. Oh, okay, well, I'm gonna send segment A, which is generational travel, this email about upcoming all-inclusive specials on multiple bookings. And I'm gonna send segment B, my couples travel about a really great deal that uh, is going on in Tahiti about a bungalow for two people for whatever the price might be. Um, and you're able to send really great, useful, relevant content to two different kind of categories uh, really easy with segmentation. Not only that, but it also provides you more data. So again, that word data always comes into play too. Craft quality subject lines and pre-header lines. Uh, the subject line, I think we all know, uh, click here for new offers. Uh, the pre-header line gives them a little bit more look into what the email is about. So you wanna make sure that you spend the time and, and really make something enticing, make, some, make it sound good. But I don't recommend baiting and switching. Never recommend that. Uh, make clear call to actions for easy engagement. You also want to make sure that that call to action takes them to the content. The last thing you want to do is click here to read my uh, 10 tips for saving for a vacation. They click that link and it takes you takes them to your Facebook. No, that's not going to work. You want to make sure you follow through because, again, that creates number two, create trust and expertise. Be honest, be transparent, and be real. I can't stress enough how much I think the personal effect as being a travel professional in today's age, post COVID is gonna be. People want to deal with people again. They aren't interested in the OTAs. They're not interested in the big businesses much anymore. They're wanting to have a personal connection and interaction. Constantly review and evolve, just like with your SEO, just like with your online website, just like with your social media, review. Take one day a month and spend that day looking at data. What worked? What didn't work? How can you get better? Number five, video marketing. Oh, man. Well, 80% apparently is going to be watching video in 2021. I think it's probably pretty safe to say video marketing would be a useful tool as a travel professional. Now, it's not always fun to be in front of the camera. But if you are able to successfully engage and create content of interest, it could be a really useful tool. You don't need to, a studio to produce high quality content anymore. I mean, it's insane. Your smartphone is everything. You need an up-to-date smartphone. You can't have you know, the iPhone 2. Uh, you need to have something that's somewhat newer with a high quality camera system. I recommend a gimbal and a mobile tripod. Those are three things that you need. And you can create some pretty amazing content uh, a gimbal is a, it's kind of like a, a selfie stick. I think everyone's heard of that at some point. Um, but instead of a selfie stick that just holds your phone, it actually levels and stabilizes your phone, which is really cool to have. So when you're walking and you're shooting yourself on video talking about this wonderful beach in Jamaica you're on and there's no one there and it's, it doesn't get all bouncy. It looks like there's like a, a you know, a, a straight up a track video machine in front of you. Uh, so it's a $70, $80 investment, and they produce just the amount of content it produces is phenomenal. So I recommend those three things. And 10 tips for video marketing. And, and we see these, you know, these girls on these cameras, and they're talking about, um, this looks like she looks like she's a travel agent, maybe already. Um, but you guys really have the ability in this industry to capture amazing content because everywhere we go in the world is beautiful, even if it's in our own backyard. So when you're on your next trip, whatever that might be, make a point to make at least one or two videos, maybe even more. If you guys get on a cruise again, which will happen, hard to believe, but it will happen, um, and you guys go to four different ports, you should make a video for each port. 
these videos don't need to be long. So practice makes perfect. Your first video is not going to be great. Your second video might be a little bit better. But your hundredth video is going to be really good. And you'll look back on that first video and go, oh, boy, what was I thinking? Um, but it really does. It, you know, it's just like anything. It, it, the more you do it, the better you get. Create a storyline. This helps with the clarity of goals and will produce quality um, if you can come up with a story you want to create, whether it's talking about your day, whether it's talking about a single meal, whether it's talking about an excursion or a tour you went on. Create some kind of a timeline of the shots you need to get, what you want to talk about, and the goals you have. Promote your business throughout, obviously. At the beginning, middle, and end, you want to say, if you're ever interested in visiting this wonderful beach or this wonderful restaurant or this very unique bar, my name is Wanda, and I can help you get here. You want to make sure that you do that because people skip around in videos, and the chances of you mentioning it three times is a lot better of being heard. You want to be real, personable, make mistakes, and laugh it off. Your oops moments are going to happen, whether you stutter up on a, on a word, mispronounce, which I've done like 100 times in this presentation. Uh, it, it, laugh it off. It's not the end of the world. Nobody's perfect, and we're not all robots. So don't worry about it. Short is sweet, and it's effective. A 30-minute video does not get watched as commonly as a two-and-a-half to five-minute video. Uh, the human attention span is dwindling quickly. And uh, the shorter your videos are, the more chances you have of a high view count and, again, a high user satisfaction rating. If you're hosting your videos on YouTube, that affects it greatly. Not only will your videos be on Google, but they will also be utilized on your website. And the more they get watched, the higher they will rank in search engines on YouTube. Quick short clips, they're attention holding and they're easy to produce and edit. So when you're on a beautiful peach and you have that tendency to get your phone out and scroll from one horizon slowly all the way across the ocean with nothing in it to the other side of the beach, don't do that. Do a quick, quick shot. It makes it easier to edit. Trust me, I've done quite a bit of video editing in my day. Short is sweet. It makes it a lot easier. And the quicker the clips are, it, it's just more attention getting. Uh, nobody wants to live in that moment because they're not there with you. They want to see it and they want to move on. All right, let's go to number seven, add text subtitles or text descriptions. Uh, a lot of programs nowadays can do this for you if you um, pronounce and enunciate clearly enough, or you can go through and type it yourself. But there's a lot of auditory um, people and times, if you're at work and you can't listen to your uh, audio on your computer, you might want to just read the subtitles. By doing that, you're opening up your reach, you're opening up who's going to see your video, and also the effectiveness of it. Share your first-person experience with honesty and integrity. Uh, if you heard about a great place to go in Jamaica and you get there and it's full of trash and not very appealing, you probably don't want to recommend it or send people there. So be honest. You know, so, yeah, we heard this was great and it's kind of cool, but I wouldn't be coming back or recommend you to go here. Marketing your videos efficiently on all of your avenues. So if you create a video, it should have your logo on it. It should say your, your business name a few times. It should obviously show them how to contact you, probably the beginning and the end with your website, your phone number, your email, whatever other things you have to contact you. Um, but you also want to share it out. So share it out on Twitter, share it out on social media, share it out on your website, share it everywhere because the more people who see it, the better it's going to be. And enjoy the process of sharing your passion and your business. I mean, travel's fun. People love to travel. And it's an enjoyable thing. It's not like rotor rootering your toilet. Uh, this is a fun job you have. So share it. Be proud of what you do and, and share that experience and that fun. So let's talk about it. And, and before we open up to questions here, I'm going to put this next one on. Um, Joni's going to share a link into the chat box. There's going to be one winner of the book today, but all of you who've come are going to get a 10% off all of our books at our website, which is homebasedtravelagent.com. I really would love for every single one of you to purchase the digital marketing book. Not, I mean, obviously, we'd love to sell some books so we can have a fancy dinner one night soon, 
Uh, but to be truthful, guys, this book will change the way you look at digital marketing and it will help. I firmly believe it. Um, there's a lot of uh, certification courses that are reviewing this book to add it in their education platforms. It is a great, great read. Um, so I'm going to leave this on there. Uh, the code to access the 10% discount is Get Back to Travel 10. Joni, if you could send that out to them, there's the URL she's sending already has the code in it. So you just have to click that link, purchase whatever books you want to purchase, if you want to purchase them, and that code will automatically apply at the checkout. So Joni, do we have any questions? Yep, this link has been sent, Andy. All is out there for all of them. All of you folks, just take a look in your uh, chat area. It should have been sent to everybody, so we should be good. Um, and in terms of questions, yes, Andy, we do. <laughs> Fantastic presentation. My goodness, you did. You just make me so darn proud. That's a mom talking. Sorry, can't help it. Okay. <laughs> it, it is just there. So let's just go ahead and start on some of these questions. I may not. We may not have time to get to all of them. You tell me when you you have to be done. So first one is um, just kind of a comment and asking for your thoughts. What I find challenging is all of the different types of marketing out there and the costs. If I were to focus on just one, what would you suggest? It's a great question. Um, and, and, you know, the cost can be a, it can be a lot. Um, but as we look forward, I, I wouldn't, a year ago, Two years ago, I would have said, uh, you know, focusing on social media might be your way to go. Today, given the past year, I would say to focus your marketing efforts on driving people to your website. But before you spend any money, create some content. And before you create content, learn about SEO and how to implement an SEO strategy and the plan of building content and rep keyword repetition and all these things I've talked about today. And then I might do a, you know, a Google AdWord campaign uh, specific to your niche. You know, you don't want to spend all your money on the word travel. You want to focus on your specialty. Do a small campaign and see what it does for you. You know, because driving traffic is one thing, but really you don't want traffic. You want bookings. So see if it converts to you. Um, that would probably be the best way I'd go about it. Uh, the other way that might cost a little bit of money, but also be very effective is email marketing. Um, again, if you spend the time in creating something that people will actually want to open and use, um, you know, you, the, the results you might get from that would probably outweigh what you might see in a, in a Facebook campaign or a Twitter campaign. Great. Okay. Um, so this was really kind of a something you already answered, Andy, but they asked it kind of early on in your presentation, not knowing you were going to cover it. But I'm going to mention it because there is another question that came later or a comment that came later that has something to do with it. So somebody was asking, um, Leanne was asking, how would you use YouTube as a travel agent? I think you pretty much answered that question. Hopefully, Leanne, that, that helped you. But then I did get a couple comments, um, one of them from Carla. Carla says she's made a ton of them and posted them on her YouTube channel. She loves them and they've worked well for her. So congratulations on that, Carla. She also says um, the more they're viewed, the more they come up. And she's right about that too. So those are some really good Absolutely. comments. Yeah, really good comments. Um, okay, so any, any, let me see what else we got here. What is your advice? Oops, it went away. Okay, just a sec. Um, during this time when we are busy rebooking trips, not just for the first time, which is a sad but true thing, I know we've been telling, really so sad, unfair. really sad happening so many times, um, booking new trips and uh, that we're trying to and trying to, you know, just get ahead of things um, with all the protocols and procedures. It's been needless to say, as Andy has mentioned, an incredibly challenging uh, last year. Um, but they said they've got zero time to do this and there's no money made last year to hire somebody. Do you have any suggestions? Um, you know, uh, about hiring anybody that, you know, would be a little more affordable or anything like that, Andy? Absolutely. Um, so I'm sure most of you guys have heard of Fiverr. Fiverr is a great resource. Uh, it's based on the $5 a job premise. Most of the jobs are more than $5. Um, I think Fiverr is a, a viable option if you're looking for quick work, like, you know, logo design, image work, maybe a video creation or things like that. Um, I, about two years ago, I discovered Upwork.com. That's U-P-W-O-R-K.com. I've been using it every day, uh, and it is a phenomenal platform. Basically, you post a job, whether you're looking for content creation, you're looking for an article, 
whether you're looking for, uh, you know, a branding package, which include logos for all different kinds of avenues or different styles, um, whether you're looking for SEO assistance, and you'll get, uh, you can post what you're willing to pay, and you can post that job to the U.S. or worldwide, and you'll get bids for that job from everywhere. Um, I've actually found, I, I have two full-time employees that I utilize through Upwork that uh, I work with consistently that have been amazing. Um, and, and the amount of pay that it requires is fractions to the dollar of what it would cost to hire someone here in Arizona or here in the United States. Um, so outsourcing, we all know, is a very viable thing to do. Um, you obviously don't want to outsource your call center. You want people to call you directly to build that personal relationship. But back in work, you know, creating an, a successful SEO, you know, you're going to have to create the content because no one can write it but you. But you can also utilize their skills and maximizing the reach of what you've created. And that might be something to look into as well. So I recommend Upwork.com for really professional services. Okay, that's great. A great answer for that. Um, and this question came up a couple times, so I'm going to kind of try to mix the two together. But they're talking about their they're independent contractors likely with uh, with a host agency and they're saying what if the uh -huh. website it, what if the website is run by the travel agency or in other words the host or the you know whoever it might be that's running you know handling that independent in this regard updates are done by the agency um, which has full run of the website. So what would you suggest if your if your site is obviously you know something like that you know, <clears throat> you know this is this question's come up a couple times, and uh, we run a website uh, called findahosttravelagency.com. So the last thing I ever want to do is make someone angry at their host agency or upset with them or shake things up. But it is your business, um, and sometimes uh, you know what's included may not be what's best for you. Um, so there might be an ability to, uh, there's all kinds of technology like PHP plugins and RSS feeds, um, where you might be able to create your own website uh, using WordPress or Wix or whatever website builder you choose to use nowadays, because there's a, a billion of them out there. And you can implement some of the things that they have available to you on your own privately hosted website. Um, again, it, it's kind of a, 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 a fine line between the two. Um, some of the ho some of the travel agents websites that these host agency offers are great, but they might not give you all of the capabilities that you can have when you run your own. So I think it'd be a discussion to have with the host agency. You know, like I really am wanting to work on my SEO and I really wanting to make my website work for me a little bit more. Um, you know, what are my options? And just open up that discussion, and at least from my interactions with host agencies over these past six, seven years now, um, they're all really willing to work with you, and they want you to succeed because when you succeed, they succeed. Um, so I think it's just a, a conversation and to see what's available, what other tools they might have, um, or what the options are as you have your agreement with the host agency. Yeah, perfect. All right. Um, this person is asking a question. They say they find a lot of their time managing their media, because such as Facebook and their web page, Instagram, emails. Um, she says, you know, she has several. And it's true. It, it does become a bit overwhelming sometimes just managing the outreach that you have. Um, she says it's challenging. And what would you suggest to make that easier? Would you outsource that? Or what are your thoughts on that? Um, I, that's a great question. Um, if, if it's if it's stretching you thin, uh, I would definitely again review what's working. You know, if if Twitter's not sending you, if you haven't seen a single booking come from Twitter, okay, maybe Twitter needs to take a back seat. Um, a few years ago, I focused on a, on the eighty twenty rule of social media. Eighty percent should be going to your main platform and twenty percent to the others. I'm not saying don't share to them, but don't spend as much time actively engaging on them. So I would say to, to look at them all and say, what's working, what's converting for you, what's actually driving business to you. And then if you have a couple outliers that aren't doing anything for you, maybe they need to get chopped or maybe they just need to not be a top hitter for you. Again, um, I, I think that everything should be shared, but it all should be driving back to, again, your website. Um, so that, that would be that would be my answer to that. Uh, there is also, God, I'm trying to, I was trying to think of the name this whole time. Um, there's a, a tool, I can't remember what it's called, 
Um, there's a tool that aggregates all of the social media accounts that one can hold, and it uh, shows notifications, messages, all that stuff. I can't remember the name of it. Um, oh my gosh, I totally drawn draw a blank right now. Um, I tried. <laughs> I know, Andy. I can't remember days. either. Yeah, <laughs> I can't remember. I tried it for about sixty days, and it was great, but I, I, it just wasn't a fit for our business. Um, but there are some tools out there to help you aggregate information from other, from all the social outlets. So you just check one website, you can reply directly from there, and it might save you some time that way. Yeah, if anybody that's on here happens to know what that is, pop it into the question thing, and I'll go ahead and uh, share it, because I just can't remember either, and I did know it too. Yeah. All yeah. right, so I'm going to go, probably take, this is going to be close to the last question, and then we're going to kind of get down uh, to the to the rest of it. So um, what do you recommend as the best free service, or least expensive, to use for email marketing newsletters? That's part one of the question. And then there's another part, which is um, kind of separate, but it's what is the best way to caption a video during a Facebook Live or a post recording? So they're kind of two different questions. And if you can take those, Andy, we will get down to get close to doing the prize, prize in a minute. Okay. First one, email marketing. Um, there's a ton of options out there. A lot of them charge based on your list size. So again, if you have a smaller list of 500 clients, you might just be able to run for free for a, a, a quite a long time. Um, and it might only be like $19 a month after that. Um, I'll rattle off a few names. Uh, Send in Blue, a MailChimp, Active Campaign, Constant Contact. Um, those are some of the hard hitters, top, pro, you know, top providers that give you a lot of ability, uh, availability and flexibility. Um, I would look into those and see what those, their free option or their basic package costs and what they're, what's included. And again, depending on your list size. Um, our list is, is fairly large, at about 75,000 uh, subscribers. And, you know, and, and the monthly fee for that is it's not terrible. Um, it could be a lot worse. So um, I would just shop around and maybe start with those you know, four or five recommendations and see what you can drum up there. Um, video on the live, um, Facebook live captions. I don't have an answer for you on that. To be truthful, I've never done a Facebook live. So I, I don't know how you can auto caption those. I know that YouTube, because we've uploaded so many of our videos for our YouTube account, it does have the ability of auto captioning. But what I did find is you have to go through and alter the text quite a bit for people who mispronounce things like I do. Um, so you have to spend the time to go through and do that. Um, another thought to do is if you're making like a short video um, about what you're, you know, say you're on, a, you know, we go back to the example of a beach in Jamaica, um, putting the name of the beach, you know, and then location and your contact information as a very, like as a footer almost on the whole video as a watermark, if you will. Um, and then you can put little captions in there, but you, know, if you don't talk the whole time. It's kind of nice too. So if you put some music on it and you just talk a few times through, then it's a lot easier to put those captions in. So it just depends, I guess, on the content you're creating. Okay, perfect. All right, uh, last question, and this is relative. And I was going to get up, Carl, and go count the pages or, or look at the book, but it's in the other office, and I didn't want to leave the question time. So, Andy, how many pages are in this book? Hold on, let me get one. I know, I, I couldn't remember. I, I know it's like, I want to think it's it's a lot I know, Dad and I were talking about it yesterday, but I can't remember. I know it's to over 260. Yeah. I don't remember the exact. I've, Let me see if okay. I can find it. Okay, okay, thanks. Patience, everybody. Yeah, sorry. We, we can move on while I'm looking okay, for it. I'll let, my book we'll somewhere. move on. Okay. How long is the 10% code good for, Andy? I'm going to let that thing run until April 1st. Okay, perfect. All right. And a bunch of people have said thank you and a bunch of people have said how great it was. So I'm I'm really excited that everybody enjoyed this so much. Um, so as he's Yay, getting those, that makes found me it. Happy too. Yeah, when you find no, it. No, I haven't found it yet. Okay, no. no big deal. So we're going to go ahead soon, and let me tell you, to tell you what's going to happen with the prize, which, if Andy, as Andy said, will be a free book. Um, what I'm going to do is um, Andy's going to ask a question, and the fifth person that puts the correct answer in the question pane will be the winner, and I will announce who that fifth person is, and then we're going to be good to go. And as I mentioned earlier um, in a in a chat that I sent to all of you. This has been recorded and is being recorded, and you will be able to access it at www.travelprofessionalnews.com later on today. So, 
Okay, so I can't find my copy of the book. I do apologize. <laughs> it's okay, but I know, I know it's well over. I'm probably two. looking right at it. I know. I'm going to say it's it's well over 260 pages. It might be in the two. It's either 264 or 284. Okay. But it's a long book, and it's an eight and a half and eleven uh, eight and a half by eleven book. So it's not a small one. It's a lot of reading. I won't lie to you about that. Um, but the chapters are broken down in a really, really fun way uh, where you can kind of jump around if you wanted to focus just on email marketing or SEO. Um, so it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of content. Okay, I found out we have Freddie. Thank you. Freddie must have the book. Freddie, it's 272 pages, and thank you for sharing that. <laughs> okay. I was at 264 and 284, so right in between. You are so close. Thank you very much, Freddie. You're close. Okay. So, Andy, you want to go ahead and ask your question? All right. I know that there's going to be a lot of right answers here. It seems like we've had a great audience today. And oh, thank totally. you guys, seriously, for spending the time with us. Um, I really want our industry to come back. And, uh, you know, personally, uh, I've invested years in this just like you guys. So I want it to come back. And as we look forward, you guys are seriously the glue that's going to piece this industry back together. Um, so I, I, every tool that we can give you guys, every piece of information we can give you guys to help you succeed, that's what we want to do. So thank you guys for spending the day with us. Uh, the, the fifth correct answer is going to get the free book. After the presentation's over, we'll send you an email, get your information, and we'll email it out to you. What is the ultimate goal in a digital marketing campaign? I'll, re I'll add to it. What do you want people to end up at? Do, 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 do. Almost there. Okay, we have our winner. Our winner is Robin Finch. Congratulations. And the answer to the question was at your website. Okay. There so, you go. Well done, Robin, and and many more. But you know, Andy, there were some really great questions. It was they were all so good. That that was our answers. That was kind of a so many answers to this one. Book more trips, brand awareness. Uh, yep. Yeah, I know. All I mean, them. it's awesome. Yeah, you guys had some great ideas. These are these are perfect. But um, everybody, thank you very much um, on behalf of uh, Andy and I both and Travel Professional News and our other sites. And we just really appreciate your continued support and um, look forward to seeing you um, at the next webinar. Andy, thank you so much. So well done. No problem. Thank you guys all for attending. Thank you for the help today, Mom. All right. We'll see you guys later. Thank you. Bye-bye.